I understand and appreciate the sheer amount of work and talent and effort that must have gone into the creation of the crew, Ubisoft's open-world sandbox racer set in a miniature United States. From design, to coding, to acting, to script writing, down to the often underappreciated HR person. People had to scout locations. Someone had to map this entire little country. Relationships with car companies needed to be forged. The crew isn't just a video game. It's a monument of teamwork and digital achievement that could have only been done with the financial backing of a AAA studio like Ubisoft, EA, or Activision. Having said that, don't bother with the crew. Don't bother with the crew, despite the fact there are no other games on the market like it. Don't bother with the crew, despite the few moments of true exhilaration it genuinely gave me. Don't bother with the crew, even though there are places within this tiny United States that made me temporarily forget where I actually was, sitting in my home office in a cold New Jersey December. Don't bother with the crew, because when it's all said and done, the crew is a boring and bad game. The Crew is a story of vengeance where gamers play as Alex Taylor, played by Troy Baker, and climb the ranks of the Five Tens, a gang that somehow controls parts of the United States by driving their expensive cars very fast. Try not to think about the financial reality of that too hard, it'll make your head hurt. As Alex gains in experience, he assembles his own crack team of misfits, also out to topple the Five Tens. Gameplay-wise, players can take part in a few different types of missions main story missions that consist of races, time trials, escapes from the authorities or rival gang members, or bumping enemy cars until their car is broken, or a combination of the four. Side missions are played to get new parts for cars and a few extra bucks. They consist of racing through gates under a timer, smashing through obstacles under a timer, yep, these two are essentially the same thing, except one's more off-road than the other, maintaining a proper race line on a timer, staying on the road for as long as possible on a timer, Again, these two side missions are essentially the same. Escaping the ever-expanding radius, which is just staying on the road as long as possible, as fast as you can, jumps and hill climbs. That sounds like a lot, but in reality there's only about three true variations of side missions here. Players can also take part in epic endurance races that often range from an hour or two or more that tour the greater part of the United States. And of course, all these events either take place with circuit, performance, street, off-road, or raid cars, all of which can be modified for performance or aesthetics. Before I dig into what absolutely breaks the crew, I want to take a few moments and note the game's high points. The cars in the game look lovely, but I was a bit disappointed by the selection available. The visual customization is also extensive, ranging from a variety of colors and finishes to even decals that can be placed on each car for a cost of in-game currency called bucks. I'm sad to report that I couldn't afford the hippie flowers for my Lamborghini in time for this review. The game also sports a very impressive first-person point of view mode, both in the driver's seat and on the dash. While driving in a few cross-country off-road races, my heart was absolutely pumping from the exhilarating blind jumps in heavy wooded areas. I can't say I've experienced anything like it in any other game. I can also say that the Grand Endurance races have a high emotional payoff value. When you invest two hours into one race without the ability to pause because you're playing an online match with friends, edging out the super competitive PC control cars and crossing the finish line in first place by the skin of your teeth will get your heart pumping. I'd also like to note that the best times I had with the game were when I caught up on a few of my favorite old albums and just drove to see the sights without regard for gas, rest stops, other drivers, or the well-being of my car, mostly because the cars in the game visually heal before your eyes like Wolverine. Doesn't sound too bad so far, right? Buckle up. Hate rubber banding AI drivers? Then you'll really hate the crew. I worked hard to gain first or second place in a lot of races only to have the AI drivers slingshot right by me with little or no regard for traction, gravity, or the fact that their car was 200 levels lower than my own. Car levels. While I'm on it, I need to say that car levels is one of the most disappointing aspects of this game. Perhaps I had my hopes up or expectations too high, but part of me wished that upgrading my car was the result of researching car parts at various garages, weighing positives and negatives to each part, Perhaps I would get better acceleration for a certain exhaust system, but it weighed more, so my top speed may take a hit. I was dead wrong. Parts are awarded to players for completing the side missions that are speckled across the huge map. Depending on how well you do in the task, you are given a bronze, silver, gold, or platinum part. 
The game then tells you whether or not the part is better than the current one equipped, using an easy to understand green and red numeric system. The mission can then be replayed as many times as the player would like, because you may have more than one car that would benefit from this new part. As you gain in levels, more missions open up, resulting in better and better parts available for the player. It is a really poor system. I felt totally disconnected from the performance customization of my car. I had nothing to do with how it turned out. There's no personality or gameplay, it's all just numbers. Even stranger, when I would try to go to a customization garage to purchase new or better parts for my cars, none of the garages would have car parts that would make my car better. If that's not strange enough, there are perks that can be unlocked that make car upgrades cheaper at garages. Cheaper? Cheaper than what? Nothing? The game is trying to give me a 5% discount on items it doesn't stock. That's quite a deal. Money, it seems, is mostly used for cosmetic changes and for purchasing new cars. The cars didn't really seem to make much of a difference. I raced my dinky Ford Focus up against some very beefy cars and still came out on top. My uber expensive Lamborghini that took me days to save up for didn't feel much different than my less pricey Mercedes. And what's even stranger is the game limits what you can use each car for. Certainly some cars can be used in all classes, but why can't all cars? This is a video game where boundaries are limitless. If I want to put insane off-road tires onto my Lamborghini and turn it into some sort of Frankenstein raid car, I should be allowed to. Okay, so using money to buy upgrades is out of the question, and players can pretty much get through the entire game using their starter car for everything. That's a bummer for single-player gamers who want something closer to a driving sim like Gran Turismo, but the game bills itself as a cooperative experience. How is the co-op? Bad. Aside from the serious connectivity issue that dropped a few of my co-op partners from the game consistently at the very end of missions, forcing them to replay the same boring missions over again, there is a massive problem of balance. If players join together to take part in the multi-hour endurance races, the game automatically upscales the difficulty to the player with the highest level. Setting the already overpowered AI with its magical rubber banding abilities to the maximum level available makes it impossible for the lower level players to stand even the slightest chance in these races. Therefore, everyone should just take part in the endurance races alone. There's no soft capping levels, there's no ability to turn off custom cars and only race stock cars to even the playing field. There is no reason whatsoever to play the endurance races with a friend unless you happen to be close enough in level. And where's the fun in that? Why would I? Why would anyone recommend to a friend to pick up this game with this type of mentality? Hey bud, I know you'll be 30 levels lower than me and the AI will murder you within the first 10 seconds of the race, but you should buy this $60 game so we can race together for over an hour where you feel bad about your car. I could go on for a long time about the many things that bother me about the crew. The races and spectator mode sponsored by Xfinity? The fact that New York and LA felt more alive in GTA 4 and 5 than they do here. The fact that the East Coast is jammed with way more activities than the Mountain States, yet clearly more time was spent in designing the Mountain States than the East Coast. The fact that the Super Cops also rubber band to you and spot you the moment you're within their radius, not within their line of sight, one of the great high points that Watch Dogs, another Ubisoft title, actually did well. The Appalachians felt flat, and the Rockies felt like the Appalachians. The textures, aside from the road and the cars, are bad. The story is pure garbage. I can't set up my own race routes with friends. Why does the game split me up from my friends when we all want to take part in the same multiplayer competitive race? There are short 10 to 15 minute races and multi-hour affairs. Where are all the mid-range races? Why aren't there more race tracks? Why aren't there more races specific to each city? Why is this billed as a co-op game when it's not co-op friendly? Most of the time when I asked for people to join me in a co-op mission, either no one answered or the game said no one was within range, so I had to play a vast majority of this game alone. If I played the vast majority of this game alone, why did it need to be in a persistent online world? Why am I constantly seeing hot air balloons, low flying helicopters, and single propeller planes everywhere? Why do I need two different types of off-road car classes? Why is the amount of damage given to enemy cars so inconsistent when I ram them? Why don't they realistically crash when I T-bone them at 140 miles an hour? I could beat this dead horse for hours and ask hundreds of questions that will never be given a satisfactory answer, but the simple fact of the matter is, 
The crew isn't fun, and that is the worst thing I can say about a video game. I played the same side missions, albeit in new locations, over and over again, and they never got better. Just lazier. Is the size of the map impressive? Sure, but who cares if it's not used properly? The crew is like buying a gigantic flawed diamond. It's cloudy, discolored, the cut is asymmetrical, but hey, it's big. Therefore, it deserves a $60 price tag, right? What few moments of fun I had were a flash in the pan. The rest of my time in the crew felt like a chore. The crew needed at least another year in the making, not just for technical reasons, but because they needed to further test what would make the game fun, and then of course to implement those choices. It's neat to drive through this little United States once to see the sights, but after that it's a totally forgettable experience. The tools for an amazing game are here. The crew, despite its silly storyline, should have been the king of all racers. This could have been an amazing game. The Gran Turismo everyone has been dreaming of for years, combined with the do-anything mentality of a skate game. But the final result is nothing close to that. It feels like a watered-down corporate experience with no heart whatsoever. This video is made possible through generous fan donations on Patreon.